We now move on to kinetic modeling, starting with an example of gold standard two tissue compartment modeling with an arterial input function. For this example, we will use dynamic FTG PEP data from a rat imaged on the Bruca Albira SI. An arterial whole blood input function has been adapted from another animal so that we can demonstrate two tissue compartment modeling. In this case, the input function represents the red box on the left, the arterial concentration in plasma. Then with the two tissue compartment model, we can model transport into the tissue, the activity of hexokinase converting FTG into FTG6-phosphate and perhaps a degree of the reverse reaction. The blood data was measured with a high temporal resolution using a Swiss trace twilight coincidence detector and literature values for the conversion of whole blood concentration to plasma concentration will be used. The two tissue compartment model will allow us to extract the glucose metabolism in micromole per minute per 100 gram of tissue, as well as to separate glucose transport from metabolism. The exercise will be performed in the kinetic modeling tool directly. Because we can start the exercise using the time activity curves generated in section 2, exercise 4. In that exercise, we normalize the RAT3 FTG brain PET data to a PET template and extracted the time activity curves using Atlas volumes of interest. The time activity curves were saved in the PKIN TAC format so that they can be loaded from the main menu here in the kinetic modeling tool. This is the orange menu in the lower left and we can select load tissue tax to see the database for saved time activity curves. Here you see we have a version that we prepared for you as the backup and we have the test version that I saved during the exercise earlier. I will select the original version and retrieve the time activity curves. As usual we first get a warning message about the lack of blood data to do compartmental modeling. So first we will add the blood data that we need. The time activity curves are organized according to a list in the top right where we see all of the atlas regions available and the models are organized in a list labeled by model. The model can be configured independently per region or applied to all regions simultaneously. The next step is to load the blood data that we need for the two tissue compartment model again using the kinetic menu in the lower left. First we should select load whole blood activity and from the available data we can select the FTG activity in whole blood which is what would be measured with the Swiss Trace Twilight. For your information, the preparation of these blood files for use in PMOD is described in our online documentation. The whole blood curve can be displayed by turning on the appropriate checkbox underneath the curve display. We see the typical rapid increase in concentration after bolus injection and then wash out over time. The plasma input function can then be calculated from the combination of this whole blood tracer activity and the fraction describing the ratio between plasma and whole blood concentrations over time. We can do this by loading the plasma over whole blood ratio, which again was prepared as a text file and added to the database. In this case, it's the FDG conversion whole blood to plasma activity, as this fraction will convert concentration that we've measured with the twilight in whole blood to what the concentration in plasma would be if we did manual blood sampling and could compare the two. Then again we can display this plasma curve and see the difference between the two. Metabolites in the blood are not a significant problem in FTG studies so a parent fraction is not necessary. The blood data and the fraction curve can be viewed on the blood tab. Radio buttons for whole blood, plasma and metabolites reveal the associated data. So on whole blood 
we see the curve that we previewed on the previous tab. On the plasma tab, we see the resulting plasma curve, but we can turn off the two elements labeled as activity models and see the data points from the literature describing the difference in the concentration between whole blood and plasma over time. In this case, it shows us that the concentration was higher in plasma at the start of the measurements, falling closer to a ratio of 1 over time. The PMOD automatically corrects the whole blood curve to account for this distribution, and then it uses the resulting total activity in plasma curve for the model. In the case of traces with metabolite fractions, this curve would then be corrected for that metabolism in the body. It's important to note that image-derived input function methods often neglect these corrections. An important concept in studies with external measurement of the tracer activity in blood is a difference in timing between the PET data and the blood data. This is known as the delay. This represents the time it takes the blood to leave the body along the catheter used for blood sampling before the activity reaches the detector. We can enter a reasonable starting value for the delay on the whole blood tab, in this case a value of 20 seconds. By zooming into the peak region with a left click and drag, we can see how this has shifted the input function which will eventually align it better with the upshoot in the PET data. Now that we have the final blood data, we can perform modeling with a representative time activity curve. So we go back to the tissue tab and from the list of regions we can select a region that we know to be a bit larger and contain more voxels to be less noisy than some of the smaller regions may be. Scroll down through the list and select cortex motor left. Next we can change the model from the default one tissue compartment to the two tissue compartments FTG model. We see a change in the available rate constants that will be fit and to investigate whether there is indeed some removal of FTG 6-phosphate we can activate the K4 checkbox to see the difference between our model curve and our measured PET data, we can turn off the display of the blood curves and then we can make a first model fit by clicking fit current region. Using iterative methods PMOD finds rate constants for the model that produce the best agreement between the blue model curve and the measured PET data. Relative error in these estimates is shown to the right of the resulting rate constants and the residuals between the model and the PET curves are shown in the lower plot window. The actual glucose metabol metabolism rate, MRGLU, is displayed below the rate constants and it is dependent on the lumped constant and the plasma glucose at the time of the study. The lumped constant is usually taken from the literature but the plasma glucose should be measured in each subject. The delay can also be included in model fitting. This can improve the reliability of the model results. From the menu below fit region, fit region and blood delay can be selected. We see a slight change in the rate constants and if we go to the blood tab we see that from our initial value of 20 second delay the model has now found a slightly shorter delay of 15.15 seconds. Returning to the tissue tab, the changes of the parameters using the different fitting options are best inspected using the show history button. The last entry in the list shows us the last model fit that was performed. There we see the blood delay of 15.15 seconds compared to the previous fit with 20 seconds that we entered manually. The rate constants are displayed to the right and further to the right, mathematical criteria such as the Aikaiki Information Criterion, AIC, and Schwartz Criterion, SC, can be used to identify the best model. 
smaller values generally indicate a better fit. And then in the case of both AIC and SC, we see that by including the delay in the model fit, both parameters were reduced. We can also try setting K4 to 0 and refitting the model in this region. We uncheck K4 and enter a value of 0. We see a preview of what the likely effect on our model fit will be. And then we can try fit current region again. Although we achieve a general fit, we see that it is not as good as the fit was when we included K4 in the model. If we go back to the model history and have a look at the MR glue, we can also see that there is a significant change in the value from approximately 16 to about 12. By selecting the previous entry in the history and double clicking, we can go back to that configuration we see the model fit improved and we see our previous MR glue value. The model and these reasonable values for the rate constants can now be transferred to all other regions for fitting across the brain. At the bottom of the tool we can use the copy to all regions button model and parameters which will copy this to all of the available brain regions and then we can use fit all regions to calculate the model fit in all of the available VOIs. Once the fitting is complete, we can select a couple of other regions from the list to see how the model fit compares. In our quick selection of examples, it looks good. Then we can see the summary of the results using the View Parameters button in the lower right. Here we see all of the fitted brain regions and all of the results for those regions. We see that the blood delay, lumped constant and plasma glucose are constant across the regions as well as the fraction of blood attributed, or the fraction of tracer concentration attributed to the blood. These results can be copied to clipboard or paste into something like Microsoft Excel. And alternatively, we can close this dialog and use the kinetic menu to save either the same results as a KM parameters file or the entire project using save KM file. This is recommended in any case, saving it to the database where we can make a new version of our FDG tissue compartment based on these atlas regions and this is our test run.